In the last video on stealing the blinds, we discussed how the size of your rays relative to the size of the blinds and the size of any antis that might be present is critical in determining the minimum percentage of times that both the small blind and the big blind must fold for your steal to show a profit over time. We explained how a raise of three big blinds without antis requires a minimum folding rate of 66% from both of the blinds for the steal to be profitable in the long run. If you lowered the preflop raise size to two big blinds and still didn't have any antis, you actually decreased the threshold to 57%, which was good news. And then if you, if you held the preflop raise constant but introduced an ante, of 0.25 times the big blind, the minimum threshold that both the small blind and the big blind had to fold for a steal to be profitable plummeted to 34%, just about one third of the time. What we haven't yet discussed though is whether these threshold folding percentages are reasonable. Let's think about what types of hands the small blind and the big blind are willing to fold and what types of hands that they're, they're going to stick to and proceed, meaning our steel won't work. First, let's look at an average small blind and the big blind, meaning if you're to play millions of hands against all types of opponents, how often is a typical small blind going to fold to a preflop raise? Well, a good guess might be about 85% of the time. The big blind, on the other hand, on average he defends his blind, meaning he only folds 45% of hands. The chance that both of these players fold in the same hand is just the product of these two percentages, or about 38%. And against these typical opponents, stealing would only be profitable, and only by a small margin, in our third scenario, where an ante and a pretty big ante is present. So why is stealing blinds so popular then? Well, it turns out if you're on the button and the small blind and the big blind are actually tight, meaning they play very few hands, you can win a pretty penny stealing their blinds. So let's look at two players in the blinds who are really tight. Let's say they only play the top 10% of hands meaning they'll fold 90% of the time. And for simplicity, we're going to say the small blind and the big blind are exhibiting the same behavior. The joint probability that both fold in the same hand is then 81%, a gigantic number compared to everything we've looked at so far. So what does the top 10% of hands look like? Well, it's pocket pairs from ace-ace down to 10-10, and then not too many other hands. We're talking about suited aces down to ace-9, and then big big uh, face cards like queen-jack suited and king-queen off. It turns out if you're raising two big blinds and there's a 0.25 big blind ante present against this profile of opponent in your small and big blind, Stealing blinds will turn an average profit of 0.3 big blinds per hand. It's about a 16% return on investment, so not too shabby. But, antis aren't always present. For most of the poker tournament, you're without antis. So, let's ask ourselves the question, is it possible for stealing blinds to be profitable pre-ante? Well, to answer that question, let's look specifically at raising two big blinds when no antis are present. We've already talked about how our minimum fold rate is 57%. So let's write that down and then ask ourselves, how often does that mean our small blind and our big blind need to be folding to yield that joint 57%? It turns out, if we assume that our small blind and our big blind must act in the same way, there's only one answer to this equation. 
it's 0.75. So 75% of hands, the small blind and the big blind are folding, meaning they're only playing the top 25%. And for your intuition, that includes pocket pairs down to 6-6. Six, six. And at the bottom of the range, there's hands like a 7 offsuit, 10-8 suited, king-6 suited, and ace-2 suited. So it includes a lot of hands. It's really getting down there. And if you're against opponents who, who you think will play this many hands, or even less, you're at least break-even by raising two big blinds pre-flop from the button with no so stealing blinds can be incredibly profitable under the right circumstances. You should be looking for three things. You want the blinds to be tight, meaning they play a small range of hands. Ideally, you would have antes, hopefully large ones. And finally, you should be raising preflop as small as possible to effectively get the small and the big blind to fold.